broadcasting live. This is Ken Rockwell with KenRockwell.com and KenRockwell.tv. I have a secret prototype that was sent to me of a Canon EF lens to Nikon Z mount adapter that should let us use our Canon EF lenses on our Nikon Z cameras, which I will think will be fantastic. Now, as a little teaser, this is the same company that sent me this little adapter. This little adapter here, it's from Fringer, and you can buy this adapter today. Now, this adapter is for Fujifilm cameras, and this one is complete, although I don't know if it's got the current firmware. Let's see what happens with this adapter. This should allow a Canon EF lens to work on a Fujifilm camera with full compatibility. Let's see what happens. Here's my trusty X-T30. Here's the adapter. This should match. Again, for readers and viewers who've just joined us, we're going to unbox a secret shipment I have of a prototype of a Canon EF to Nikon Z adapter. But just for fun, I'm going to try the same company's adapter on my Fujifilm camera. Let's see what happens. Okay, let's change to a different display. The lens definitely works. Oh, and it definitely autofocuses. How cool is that? It won't focus that close, though, because this is a telephoto lens. What if I try my VR lens on this Fujifilm adapter? Here's my... I love this lens. This is my 28 to 135 IS full frame Canon lens. Let's see what it does on the Fujifilm camera. Oh, ho, we've got wide angle. Now, the question is let's, the stabilizer's now off. Let's see, what am I doing here? Live, on screen, unrehearsed. Does it focus? Oh, it definitely autofocuses. Let's see if the stabilizer works. Oh, I can hear it working. Oh, yeah. Stabilized? Unstabilized. Good. But that's not the real subject of this broadcast. The real subject of this secret broadcast. Again, this is live, unauthorized, unscripted. Heaven only knows what's going to happen here. This is live television. This little Fujifilm adapter seems to work, but I don't really care anywhere near as much as I care about what I believe is a prototype of a Canon EF to Nikon Z full frame or EFS or DX adapter. Let's put this guy away. At least we know that this one works. That is a very good sign. And this one works without even having updated the firmware. Thank you for joining us here live at Ken Rockwell, KenRockwell.com, KenRockwell.tv. If you've got any questions, pop them to me in the comments, which I should be able to see on my screen as I'm doing this. And we'll get to the comments and questions a little bit later. Okay, welcome to live chat. This is going to get fun as we have the actual package shipped to me that was dropped off by DHL's international shipping folks just a moment ago. Where's my big knife? My big Smiths & Wesson HRT knife. What have we got here? Okay. What we're going to do is open this up. Again, this is a prototype. It's final hardware. This happens a lot. The hardware is final. The firmware is always being developed. And something I complain about today is there's too many people like Nikon and Fuji Canon seems to be okay. Introduce products that aren't done yet. The hardware is done, but the firmware is not. And they sell it to us. We pay full dollar for it, and the product doesn't even work yet. And I review a product, and things don't work. And I'm like, you know, I don't have a lot of tolerance for that. But in any case, this is a legitimate prototype. I'm not even supposed to be doing this now, just because I love you guys. Oh, see what I got. Definitely a prototype. This is a one of. Ho, ho, ho. Okay, let's see what we get here. What 
what is in here. This is always difficult. Try not to damage whatever might be inside. And this isn't what you'd actually get when you buy it. This is a prototype extended to me as a courtesy because I asked real nice. And admittedly, if I'm not supposed to be doing this video, I'm going to have to take it down after this live broadcast. So bear with me. And for those of you who are alive, I hope you're enjoying it. What have we got here? Looks like production hardware. You know, I was told it's production hardware, but they're still working on the firmware. And usually that means making sure that it works with every possible model of Z camera and every possible model of Canon EF lens. Well, this is looking like productions. I'm just folding away my knife so nobody gets hurt here. Put that away. What have we got? This is an adapter. Hope it works. You know, music and arts, they just ask the question, hope it works. I don't know if it will or not. And honestly, if it doesn't work now, I won't be disappointed because I'm not really supposed to be doing this live. I should take my time, read the instructions, update the firmware, and then, see, if in doubt, read the manual, first and foremost. Adapter with Canon EFS and EF lenses. Oh, good. So it does both the AFSC, excuse me, APSC cropped and uncropped full frame and Nikon Z mount. Controls the lens's aperture, autofocus, lens information for EXI. Okay. Oh, okay. Most made by third party, Sigma and Tamron, get similar phase detection, AF. Excellent. Both bayonets are made of brass. Cool. Body and tripod mounted made of alloy. Excellent. High precision CNC, computer numerically controlled. Solid and durable. Light extinction design inside the adapter, make sure the optimal performance of the lens. I can show you that. Removable tripod mount. Oh, cool. So you can use the tripod mount or not. Now, again, this is pre-production, so... Oh, yeah, and the USB plug is on the bottom for updates. Z-mount cameras. Oh, cool! Even the Z50 is mentioned. That only been out a month. This is awesome. Okay. Compatibility is found in new Z cameras. Fix it through firmware. Okay, we know that. Function descriptions. Let's see if it works. In-camera stabilization. Let's see. What do they talk about? Fully supports stabilization function of the lens and of the camera, but they cannot work together. Uh-oh. Okay, in-body stabilization controlled by the camera metal, controlled by the camera menu. Lens function controlled by the IS switch on the lens. As long as it's on, it keeps working. But it says the two are independent. Don't turn both on at the same time. Okay, that's fair. Or the function will fare. Okay, it says for Canon lenses, all the tele lenses longer than 300, they use, say use the function in the camera. For all other functions, use the in-body stabilization. That's going to be fun to try, but guess what? I have a lot of Canon lenses that are not stabilized, like my 100 millimeter F2. That's going to be awesome. Okay, AF settings. You know, this is details. You guys aren't watching to have me read you the instruction manual. Oh, ho, ho. Relatively old lenses. Oh, movie AF speed settings. Okay, this is just talking about the lenses. The movie AF may not work. Okay. How to update firmware. You don't need to watch that. Okay, let's get to some fun stuff here. Take our instructions. Ah, no bag. Again, this is a prototype. Hmm, I wonder what that could be for. This is nice. We've got a Z-mount cap. It's a nice Z-mount cap. Made in China. Considering that's who sent it to me, that makes sense. Ah, this is nice and black on the inside. It's nice and black. And it's got a nice gate there. This, actually, you can't see this. This feels very well made. Indeed, this is all metal. You know, actually, I don't know what these sell for. Here's your USB connection. Well, let's hook her up. Okay, here's one of my favorite little sleeper Canon lenses. Interesting. Ah, we've got a red dot for full-frame lenses and a little white dot for EFS lenses for the crop sensors. There's my 100 millimeter F2 Canon lens. Here's my Nikon Z7. Let's see, this included... Yeah, if you want to pull off the tripod adapter. Here's an included. Ah, that sounds good turn on my Z7. Well, we definitely have a picture, but that's not saying much because, of course, you're going to have a picture because the lens is mounted. Oh, yes, we have manual focus. Do we have autofocus? Oh, cool. It works. For the first time, the world premiere, absolutely. Sorry, this is my, <laughs> this is my indoor television studio. I'd have to open up some of the windows here. It definitely focuses. Autofocus is definitely working, and you know, Autofocus is actually working pretty well, to be honest. In fact, what if we try this? Yeah, autofocus is working swell. Probably as good as any of the Nikon native lenses. But let's get, let's, real. oh, let's see. Is the aperture controlling? 
100 milliliter filter. Let's set this on manual. Manual. Yeah, love it. My lens stops from F2 to F22. Flawless. Let's try a lens you folks are probably more familiar with, although to be honest, I don't use it as much. Here's my awesome 50 millimeter F1.2 EF lens. I also have a 50 millimeter F1.0. I haven't tried that yet just because I don't want it to, I don't want to smoke that lens if I really need to do a firmware update. Although I asked the manufacturer and they said, no, nothing's going to break based on the firmware. It just might not work as well. Okay, it goes all the way to F1.2. Beautiful. Do I get? Oh, because I've got it set to manual. Yeah, because I have it set to manual. What I'm getting here is it's set to a 6400th of a second. It's Wow, you know, and this lens is totally, it's a prototype. It's not even supposed to work. I have not updated the firmware. And guess what? It's working great. Look at that. At f1.2, this is an absolutely beautiful. Oh, look at that. Can you see that? I'm sorry. I'm not sharing. Here we go. Look at that. Is that beautiful? Right off the back of the screen. You know, I'm not a real full-time YouTuber. I just do this for fun. So I don't have an HDMI reader. Sorry, folks. But that's where you're getting it live. Look at that. It focuses very well. Look out the window. You know, this is great. If a prototype works as well, I'm pretty excited to see what happens elsewhere. But to be honest, even more interesting to me is will it work with stabilization? Considering the instructions said it'll work with stabilization, I have no doubts. You know, let's be honest here. Let us I'll put my caps back on. I usually run capless when I'm shooting live television. Okay, for those of you who've just joined us, this is a live broadcast of a totally rogue, unauthorized unboxing of a prototype of a sample pre-production sample of a new EF to F, excuse me, an EF to Nikon Z, Canon to Nikon, full frame adapter. Let's see. Now Nikon can, I didn't read that comment. I'll look at your comments just a little bit later. I'm going to try to get this to work first. I am very, very happy with this. This thing works. I'll have links to where you can buy them <coughs> in my description. However, you can't buy this one yet. You can buy the Fuji one. For those of us who joined us at the beginning of our broadcast, we had a Fuji, excuse me, a Canon EF to Fuji mount lens. Well, let's see. This is the 28 to 135 millimeter stabilized Canon lens. This is the first Canon stabilized lens. I love it because it covers a huge range of useful focal lengths all the way to 135 from 28. I don't care about not being able to go to 24, but I very much care about being able to go beyond 70 to 135. I use this lens quite a lot on my full frame Canons. In fact, on a 5D, excuse me, on a 1DX Mark II, the results are, excuse me, are stunning. Okay, let's see what we got here. Will we get autofocus? Let's zoom in there. Yeah, but we knew we got autofocus. That's not a mystery. If we go out to 28 millimeters, yeah, we definitely get autofocus, although it's baffled by me moving around. Let's see if we get stabilization. Oh, the stabilization. I hear stabilization. There we go. Crazy live television here. Okay, it's a little confused, but give it a break. It's looking through the window. Oh, and it is stabilizing. Oh, yes. Here it is stabilized. Now, if I unstabilize it. Ah, uh, leaving focus indoors here. You know, I'm not sure about the effect of the stabilizer because it's honestly hard to see here. You know, we'll see. But again, the fact that anything works at all, as this is purely a prototype, I'm probably not even supposed to be sharing this, but I figured, what the heck? Let's give it a shot. This is Ken Rockwell with KenRockwell.tv and KenRockwell.com. Doing a live unboxing and first look at the Fringer or Fringer Canon EF to Nikon Z mount adapter. I also have a Z50 here. You know, that's another day's trial. Let's take a look at your comments and see what I can do to reply to them. Ha <laughs> Abhishek Kumar writes, just when he was looking for old Nikon lenses. To be honest, the old Nikon lenses are good. I always like to keep things the same brand and to use the manual focus lenses that I just covered a little bit in my history of all Nikon lenses released this morning. Those lenses work great and it keeps true to the brand. Much as when I shoot my Canon EOS R, I really like using my Canon FD lenses on a cheap Chinese adapter. 
Let's see. Unbalanced Ears. How's that for a name? Asks me. Now Nikon can officially stop making lenses and try to make a better Z camera. Well, that's right. And like a lot of things, if they just got their firmware to work properly, for instance, when you save and recall settings, it forgets half of everything, either make it not do that function at all, like most Canons and almost all Sonys, or make it work right, please. Do I have a Z50 to try? Okay, slow ride photography asks, do I have a Z50 to try? Well, you asked, I have to do it. Here's my trusty Nikon Z50. Notice, this one's got straps on it. That means I actually carry this one around and shoot it. My Z7, uh, I'm not that excited about the Z7. Ever since the Z50 came out, it's like my new toy. I love it. Start run out of space here in the official Rockwell television desk. Okay, it's usually a good idea to turn off your cameras. In fact, Canon talked to us. The Canon Pro rep was explaining to us. Cameras have always said, please turn them off before you change lenses. But it didn't really matter back in the days of film. It just was a, an engineering nicety because you have to realize when you're taking the lens off the camera, all those connectors that are supposed to be connected like this are misconnecting, and heaven only knows what would happen. He said in the case of the EOS R, you really want to turn your camera off because that's what closes the shutter to keep your sensor clean. In any case, excuse me for drinking my drink here. Let's see. We've got a Z50. Turn her on. Oh, and I can see my drink in the picture. Let's see. What are we going to get here? Highly professional video here. Highly professional. The funny thing was, I didn't do YouTube for quite a while. I'm wondering the reasons was because I worked so long in Hollywood, I only knew how to do things right. And to do things right takes a lot of work. Uh, Z50 is a little confused. I don't know if I help it out here a little bit. Again, give it a break. This is a prototype. It's not supposed to work. I'm using a Fringer Canon EF to Nikon Z mount adapter. You know, it is working. It's just a little bit confused. What if I... Oops, wow, we've got touch focus. Let me try it. Let's, I'll, sorry, I'll try, I'll read that again. Monty Python style. Ah, much happier now. What if I get a little closer? Here's the problem. The exposure is not really that bad, but because the iPhone is seeing black and white here. Exposure is working. How about stabilization? I hear the stabilizer working, yes, and it is. Oh, it's very much stabilizing. Okay, there we go. Yes, ah. Good to report. The stabilizer is working great. Now the stabilizer is locked in. What you're seeing is the camera moving. Notice the image isn't moving on the camera screen. And now with the EF stabilizer turned off, it's going all over the place. So yes, thank you for asking. This is fun. When someone asks something, let's say, okay, let's see, what have we got here? Unbalanced ears, ask, slow ride. Unbalanced ears, try face or eye focusing. No, that would not be appropriate for broadcast. If I put it at my face, you guys don't want to see my face. You know, I don't mind showing my face. I'm, I'm just kidding. To be honest, when I watch stuff, I want to learn. If I'm watching a show about photography or gear, I either want to see beautiful women and subjects or show me the gear. I don't want to see a talking head, so I'm not going to be a talking head unless it's good. So face, eye focusing, sorry about that. But here's the thing. The face or eye focusing, that finesse in the focusing system comes from inside the camera in the camera's software and firmware. And so once this adapter gets this lens mounted to the camera, gets data communication back and forth and image stabilization working, the fine points of, of uh, eye, you know, left eye, right eye, that all is happening inside your camera. So I don't see that there'd be any difference in performance between using this adapted lens and using a Nikon lens in terms of how face and eye works. It says f1.4. Dan, uh, no, I, if you're talking about this lens, this 28 to 135 IS, let me just check that again for you. Because if it said F4, that's because it said F4. That's a good point. If it said F4, because it was shooting in F4. So I wouldn't worry about that. It certainly went from F1.2 on my F1.2 lens. Doesn't seem to be weatherproof. You know, it's an adapter. Who cares? Um, this is solid alloy. That's pretty darn weatherproof. Does it have gaskets? What fell out? Oh, the little cap fell out. Again, this is a prototype. Don't fret about that. And even if that falls off, honestly, I usually use tape. <laughs> yes, I use a piece of tape as the tape doesn't fall off. There you go. Good as new. Weather sealing? No, it does not have a rubber gasket. I think that rubber gasket stuff is a hoax. Uh, you know what my pro friends do? They take a rubber band, the big fret rubber band, when they're shooting someplace nasty like India, which, you know, dust is in the air. <laughs> they will put a big fret rubber band against the mount like this, and they're good to go. And they don't take that off. And my buddy went to... <laughs> to Indy to shoot for a couple of weeks and he was shooting some very dusty conditions. He didn't take the lens off the camera because he, his whole camera was caked in dirt. So, okay, I don't see any particular weather sealing. But unlike a lens, somebody asked once, okay, this lens is not weather sealed. It's one of their 
modern. This is a series of lenses that they do, don't develop anymore. It's a basic lens at a normal price for normal people, and it's full frame. Kind of seems to have forgotten that, but the good news is you can get all of these you want used. And if you look at my review, I've got that. Certainly air pumps in and out, but guess what? Even if you've got a totally weather sealed lens, the air pumps in and out when you zoom in and out, because guess what? The air has to go someplace. Even if it has gaskets and seals, if the air didn't move in and out, you'd actually feel the lens like a big spring of the air column being caught in it. So a lot of that stuff in my video about the history of Nikon lenses I just published this morning, I talk about how there's this marketing fluff, things like rubber focus rings versus knurled metal. It's all fluff. So likewise, weather sealing, these cameras are more weather sealed than I am. When it starts raining, I don't know about you, I don't want to be shooting out the rain. I just go home or get an umbrella or a raincoat. Okay. Thank you, Guido. Thank you so much for your question. Can he the coaster can? I like that. I'm not sure what it means, but I like it. Is the focus tracking good? Honestly, I'm sitting here at a desk here in my studio, so I don't have a way to get something to move and track it. My thought would be focus tracking should be just as good with the adapter as any other lens is on these cameras, as the focus tracking comes mostly from the intelligence in the camera. Not all, but most. Any play in the mount. You know, this is fun. And I don't know if I was making this clear. For all of you watching, send me a comment. I can see your comments live and respond to them. I don't feel any more play than anything else. It's a good, tight, rotational play. There's none. Angular play, I don't feel any either. It looks like the Chinese have this down. Danny Chu, still waiting for RF adapter to Z. Me too. You know what I'm waiting for? Well, you know, I'm not, I take that back, Danny. I'm not waiting for that because I'd rather shoot my Canon, I'd rather shoot the Canon cameras. I prefer the EOS R even at the same price. The EOS R and the EOS RP I find handle better. I prefer them over the Nikon Z. At least the Z7 and Z6 are on my other list. Don't like them. They just do a couple of things that bug me and other cameras do it better. So I prefer them. Obviously, we all have our preferences. I prefer the Nikon Z50 over the Z7 and Z6, but I still prefer my Canon. So I wouldn't adapt it that way. What I'm waiting for is for someone to introduce something I've asked for for over a year now is to make the FTZ that Nikon should have made but didn't. That has a motor in it, so it actually works with all of our autofocus lenses, not just some of them. And so that the Nikon FTZ adapter also has a feeler for, oh, I still have my lenses from yesterday's tour of all known Nikon lenses. Have a feeler so that as you rotate this ring, that it couples the lens aperture from this little lug here into the camera. All of the FX cameras have this capacity, as well as some of the better DX cameras, like the D7100, can work that. The FTZ adapter doesn't. And I don't know about you, but I'll be darned if I'm going to shoot my manual focus lenses on a Z camera, which admittedly does give me image stabilization, but doesn't give me proper EXIF data. Because here's the thing, as a little kid, ever since about 1970, I have actually taken a pen and paper and written down every exposure, every aperture, every shutter speed, every photo I've ever taken. And 20 years ago when DSLRs came out and stored that information magically with each frame, I was so relieved. So the last thing I'm going to do, <laughs> are you catching this voice? The last thing I'm going to do is start having to write down manually what f-stop I use with a manual focus lens on a new camera. No way, Jose. Thank you very much. Again, I'm reading your comments live here. Do the IS and the body and lens work together? Thank you, Brendan, for asking. No, they don't. I haven't tried them. However, the instruction said don't turn them both on at the same time because then can't tell what's going to go on. In fact, you know, I bet you I have the in-camera stabilization turned on. And, you know, it was working. But let's take a look and see what I have set. Thanks for catching me on that one because I bet you I have camera stabilization turned on. And I'm not really paying attention here. Silent. Oh, heck, maybe I put it in my optical. Ah, look at that. In the Z50, optical VR by default is off. Let's check and see what the setting is in my Z7. You know, that's good to know. When I first got this jewel of a lens, this DX 16 to 50 millimeter Z lens, when I first got it and put it on the Z7, the Z7 didn't recognize it because the Z7 was older than that lens, and I hadn't updated the firmware, so the Z7 wouldn't turn on its VR either because it didn't know that lens from Sunday. Likewise, my Z7 doesn't know this lens from a pack of, here we go, from an angry alpaca. So let's see here. Let's see what optical V, excuse me, in-camera VR, if I can find it, I don't know where they hide it. Vibration reduction was turned on. Let's turn that off. 
you know, maybe that's why vibration reduction, because vibration reduction may have been compensating. If you have both systems turn on, if they're independent, one will try to, they'll both try to compensate, and ultimately they'll make the picture so much worse. Okay. Oh, yeah. That is super stable. If I turn off stabilization on my lens, no stabilization. Turn it on the lens. And again, this is not Canon's first lens in the 1990s with stabilization. The stabilization is 28 to 135. doesn't even work very well. Their newer lenses work. Ah, yeah. Oh, cool. It is locked on. Dead hard solid. I like that. And now just trying to break things here live on air. If I turn stabilization in the camera back on, it's probably going to work really poorly. I'm not even pointing at a real subject here. Yeah. It's working poorly. So yes, because the two aren't talking to each other, you will get some, well, the one's trying to compensate this way, the other one's trying to compensate that way too, and it, it doesn't work. And that's it. Uh, let me see if we have any more comments here. This is Ken Rockwell with KenRockwell.tv and KenRockwell.com. We have been on the air live since the hour for 26 minutes. And I did a live unboxing of a secret prototype of a Fringer EF to Nikon Z adapter, which lets us use our actually any Canon full frame or APS-C lens on any of the Nikon Z cameras, be they full frame or APS-C. I am going to uh, sign off in just a little bit, uh, pending any other questions that might come through here live. And my apologies, but if it turns out I wasn't supposed to broadcast this live, I'll have to take this video off. Otherwise, this video will be archived. But the good news is this adapter works. I will put in my comments a link to buy the Fuji version. And as soon as we can actually buy this one, I will add that too. Folks, ah! Thank you, John Ackerley. Thank you for thanking me. Again, I just wanted to do this. I would do this anyway, even not doing it live. And I figured if you guys can get a kick out of it live, why not? So that's it. Danny Chu, thank you. Thank you for the experience. Guido, thank you for watching. I hope this worked. I tried to put it on. I gave you guys about half an hour, 15 minutes of advance notice, I think by telling YouTube that I was scheduling it for on the hour live. I don't know if that actually worked because as my 11-year-old uh, daughter pointed out, if I just go on the air live, it takes about half an hour for people actually to see that it's there and get on it. And that's it. This has been a live broadcast from Ken Rockwell at KenRockwell.tv. If you have any questions, you can email me or leave them in the comment section. And I thank you very much.